Man, this place is next level, eh? I feel like I'm paddling through this set of Jurassic Park or something like that. It feels very prehistoric in here. It's absolutely gorgeous. I feel like it's probably one of the most beautiful places to go for a paddle in all of Australia, I reckon. Just having these huge sandstone cliffs coming right down to the water's edge. It doesn't get much better than that. It's an absolutely stunning spot. It's been about, yeah, two years since I've been here, so definitely um yeah missed it almost forgot how beautiful it was so it's gonna be back here especially on day today there's barely any wind so it's really nice and yeah nice overcast weather so it's sort of keeping that summer's heat away which is good now i'm just going to paddle about nine or ten k's up the river find a nice place to set up camp for the night um yeah cook up a nice tasty dinner do a bit of fishing as well, well get a lot of bass around here so they're going to do a bit of bass fishing yeah just enjoy it, it should be a nice little weekend so if you guys um stick around for it These uh, dead submerged trees when they created the dam. Makes for a really cool place to paddle around through. This is where the fish will be hiding, so I'll get the rod out and cast the line in a sec. Let's get an iceberg. So I was using a little diving minnow, but I've decided to change it up to one of these little chatterbaits, which I haven't really used too much before. I used it once or twice before, but I've never had really much luck on them, but apparently they're meant to go pretty good with bass. Um, just because it's the middle of the day um, with these dead trees here, they're obviously quite deep. Um, so the bass is probably going to be sitting quite deep um, in the water column. So the diving minnow wasn't really probably getting deep enough. So I figured um, this will be able to get me deeper. Hopefully I'll have a bit more luck with that. There's so much weight to these chatterbaits you can cast so far. Well, that sun's just started to poke out now, which is good. I feel like I might be in for a pretty nice um, afternoon, I reckon. Uh, but it's about lunchtime now. I've been uh, fishing it for a little bit, but haven't had any bites yet. But then again, it is the middle of the day, so it's probably the worst time of the day to be fishing for bass, so I might save that for a little bit later on. Um, but I'm getting pretty close to where I think I might stop um, and set up camp for the night. It's, I'm about nine k's from the launch spot. Um, originally, I was planning to go about 15 k's um, to this spot that's right at the end of the lake, but I was speaking to the kayakers who were behind me and um, they were saying they're planning on camping at that end spot. So I don't really want to be camping next to anyone tonight. They're quite a large group, it's probably about 
well not a large scoop, about seven or so of them. Um, so I don't know if I really want to yeah, be camping next to anyone tonight. So even though I've camped at this spot up here before, it's where I camped in my last video. Oh, a nice little waterfall over there. <laughs> That's cool. Um, yeah, even though I've camped here before, it's a really nice spot. So I think I might, um, yeah, check that out. But yeah, I'll pull up here, have some lunch, and I'll decide then. Oh, cool. It's really pretty in here. Trying to spin that canoe around. <laughs> pretty cool. Well, I've just uh, come across the campsite now, so we'll pull up here and have some lunch. All right, well, I'll show you guys around this campsite. It's actually a really good campsite, eh? Uh, it's nice and big and clear and flat and sandy, so it makes um, some of the tarp shelter pretty easy. I've also got these beautiful casserinas for the she-oaks, so they give me um, a lot of shade throughout the day, which is always good. I've also got some firewood over there that someone's left behind, which makes life a lot easier, so it's a pretty good campsite, actually. And then, how's that for the view as well? So, not a bad one to wake up to. So yeah, I think um, this is going to do, do me pretty well for tonight, even though, um, let me get me in focus, there we go. Um, so yeah, even though I camped here about two years ago, um, I like to try and camp in new spots every time I go somewhere, but I don't know, this is a pretty good one. I've already seen a fair few people paddle down river, um, like other groups as well, so I think it's going to be quite crowded um, up the end of the river, so I think I'm yeah pretty happy with choosing this spot for tonight. So it's about 2.30, so I might um, get some grub into me, and then I'll set up the tarp shelter, and we'll go for a fish a bit later on. Well, that's pretty cool. So to go with a prehistoric location, the dinosaur that comes with the camp. So that's called a guana, for anyone who doesn't know. Pretty much get guanas all over Australia. Um, really cool animal, but the only issue you have in places like this where you get quite regular visitors is they've become quite tame. And so if you leave campsite for a few moments, you don't have your food sort of tucked away nice and safely, they'll just get stuck into it. And even like your rubbish, if you have like a campsite with like rubbish around, they'll just tear through it. They've got these big claws on them as well, so they just rip everything apart. So it can be a little bit annoying at times, but um, yeah, very cool animal anyway. It's nice to see him out here. Right, so I'm just going to make a little tarp shelter. So I'm just going to use my trusty old Alton Goods 3x3 metre tarp. Right,
And I've just got my ground sheet here, so I'll chuck that out. And then just for my sleeping mat tonight, I've just got my Nemo Tensor insulated mat, which is a really comfy mat, really highly rate this one. And just for the pillow, just got my Cedar Summit Eros pillow. Once again, really comfy this thing. Highly rate it. All right, well the shelter's all made up. Um, you guys have seen me made this shelter a dozen times already. It's probably my go-to shelter these days. Uh, it's just really roomy inside and um, gives you a lot of protection from the weather. It's also quite versatile. You can sort of adjust it um, depending on the weather. Um, so I might show you that in a second, but I need your help on something. So I need to come up with a name for it. A lot of people think it's like an Adirondack shelter, but it's actually not an Adirondack style shelter. It's a little bit different. Um, it looks like it on this side, but the other side's not the same. So yeah, I wouldn't call it an Adirondack. So if you guys can come up with a, a better name, um, leave a comment below, because I'm not quite sure what to call it. So pretty keen to hear you guys' opinions, but um, I'll show you what sort of makes it quite versatile. Yeah, so if I wanted to, I could actually bring this corner right down to the ground. And it kind of creates like a little tunnel shape. Um, so that way you can still see out, but it gives you quite a bit of protection from the weather. Or I can have this up like that and give myself a bit of an awning. So it's nice to sort of sit under and when you're cooking dinner and stuff like that, it gives you a lot of room. And I'll show you the, the third sort of style that sort of makes it um, yeah, really quite versatile. Yeah, so this is kind of the third way you can have it, which I actually quite like. It's kind of like a plow point or an arrowhead, um, but yeah, it just gives you a ton of protection. So you can sleep in there and you'll have no issue of rain getting on you. It's really quite roomy inside. There's honestly stacks of room in there. So yeah, it's really quite a versatile um, shelter. Like just by taking rid of that pole and just moving this peg further out, it creates a whole different style of shelter. So that's why I think some, you're really good about it. So. Yeah, if you guys can uh, come up with a, a good name for it, then let me know. But I'll um, grab the camera and I'll give you guys a little bit of a, a look around. Yeah, so I think the shape is really cool. It's kind of like a plow point. A little bit different though. But yeah, it just gives you a ton of room inside. And you're really quite protected from the, the elements. So I've just got that, yeah, pulling it back just to give you some more room inside. And it's actually a really cool little shelter, hey. I actually really like this one, but uh, I think for tonight I'll probably put it, the awning up so that way I can lay in bed and look out over the water. It'd be a, a bit silly not to. Um, but it's about five o'clock, so I might uh, grab some firewood. Yeah, so I'm just going to jump out of the canoe for about an hour or so and um, just go for a bit of a fish. Probably got about, I think, two hours until the sun sets. I think it's about quarter to six now and it should be dark about um, quarter to eight. So let's go out for about an hour, um, go for a fish. I'll come back and we'll get the, the fire going and get some dinner on after that. I'm not, even if I do catch a fish, I'm not going to be cooking it. I've got um, a nice burger to cook up tonight, but pretty keen just to get out there and, uh, yeah, practice those skills. So I've just um, chucked on this little surface lure, this little popper. Which I've had some pretty good luck with in the past, so we'll see how it goes this afternoon. And it's turned out to be such a nice afternoon. It's not a cloud in the sky. It's really nice out here on the water. It seems like prime bass territory down here.
Ah, oh, you're joking. I'm always stuck in a tree. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. One of the hardest things when you're still sort of learning the ropes like I am, fishing for bass is, unfortunately, bass territory is like prime snag territory as well. So you've really got to like be able to ace your cast, hey. Otherwise you just end up in a tree like I constantly do. There's a big strike just then. Damn it, that was a huge strike. Let's see if we can get him again. Well, apart from that one strike I got, I'm my clock in there. I'm coming just back out into the main lake. And man, it is, <laughs> it is turning it on right now. Oh, the sunset is gorgeous. Let's see if I can spin the canoe around so you guys can see. Have a look at that. Wow. That is pretty cool. Man, get a load of that backdrop. This is seriously something from a movie set. Honestly, just imagine all that pterodactyl is like flying through this gorge. Oh, this place is just next level. Alright, well, no luck with the fishing, so I think we might head on back and get the fire started. Just got some paper bark here. I'm just gonna break that up a little bit just to expose some fibers. I've just got some leaves from the she oak, the casserina behind me. Alright guys, well, I think it's time for a gin and tonic. So we've even got the fancy tonic this time. Haven't had this one before, so let's see how it goes. I find that uh, most people who hate gin, it's usually because of the tonic. Gin doesn't taste like it doesn't, it's a tonic that has that sort of a uh, bitter bite to it that most people don't like. Actual gin just kind of tastes more like a florally liquor. So it's, um, if you don't really like gin, maybe try it with a different type of tonic. I've just got some lemon in here. Cheers. 
Cheers, guys. Oh, now you're talking. This is like my Achilles heel, <laughs> honestly. Gin and tonic by a campfire. You cannot beat it. Oh, it's just so bloody good. Man, that tonic's actually really nice, though. This is a Mediterranean tonic rather than an Indian tonic. So just try that, that out if you guys um, yeah, want to give it a go. It's starting to get a decent little bit of coals now, so let that die down a little bit more. And then we'll um, yeah, get the, the burger on, which I'm really looking forward to. I think it's going to be a really tasty dinner. All right, so what we're cooking tonight is a nice little beef and mushroom burger, but with a little bit of a twist. So I've just got my, um, my beef patty, which is, uh, was th frozen last night and deep thawed uh, throughout the day. I've just got some rocket lettuce here. I've got my brioche bun, which is a pretty sad looking um, hamburger bun. It's about the biggest one I could find, to be honest. It's um, pretty pitiful, but anyway, we'll make it work. Just got a filled mushroom, got some onion, got a tomato, got some parmesan cheese, which I'm actually going to make like a um, parmesan cheese crisp, which um, should be quite nice. Got some pickles here, uh, just some garlic aioli and olive oil. So, first things first is um, we'll get the grill on the on the fire and heat that up and we'll get the um get the patty going first actually no i reckon we'll get the uh onion and mushroom going first and then we'll cook the patty <laughs> oh man everywhere i go it's sandy as hell actually be nice to go somewhere where there's not sand for once um so i'll just add some oil here just get the maybe coat that in the mushroom Anyway, we'll get that. We'll get that going first, and we'll chuck in the onion. Oh, that mushroom is looking mighty good. Well, I think the mushrooms and onion is done now, so. Because I'm lacking another plate, <laughs> I'm going to have to um, yeah, maybe just put it on the chopping board for the moment. Someone needs to make another fry pan like this, but a little bit larger, that nests into this. So that way you can have two fry pans. Well, you can have two fry pans, or you can have a fry pan and a plate, but um, yeah, they just nest together so it doesn't take up any extra room. I think that would be extremely handy. Because it's great to cook on this, but I also need it as a plate, so something like that would um, it'd be really good. So someone who's uh, into manufacturing, make that up for me. I'll be your first customer. I'll just chuck the beef patty in that. Oh yeah, that is looking pretty damn good. Yeah, that's about done. Right, so this is where it's going to get a little bit fancy. So I'm just going to put a little bit more oil into the pan, just so the cheese doesn't stick and burn. And I'm going to add this parmesan cheese. It's just like grated parmesan cheese. <laughs> that's probably that's probably a fair bit, but we'll make it work. Now I'm just going to sort of flatten that out and make it into a circle. And we're just going to fry it up make like a little um, cheese crisp. I might just chuck these buns on and just try and toast them quickly as well. Let's see if this works. Oh. <laughs> Alright, well I'm burning everything so <laughs> let's get that off. Alright, so let's uh, get the burger bun. Just got the garlic aioli. Now I might just add the, the pickles first. Whoa, they smell so good. And then next up we've got some rocket lettuce. And 
And then we'll put uh, maybe the tomato. And the beef patty. And then we'll chuck the, the cheese crisp on. Man, how good does that look? I absolutely love cheese crisps. So <laughs> I'm so keen for this. And then let's chuck the, uh, the onion on. Everything's <laughs> a little bit crispy, but it is me cooking after all, so what do you guys expect? Oh, man, this is looking so good. And then put the, the field mushroom on. And then to top it off, this pathetic burnt <laughs> burger bun. So that is a monster of a burger. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to fit that in my mouth, but um, I'll give it my best shot. Man, how good's that? Got the, the full moon just coming over the ridge. Can't wait for that to come over because it's such a clear night tonight. It's just going to light up the whole valley. It's going to be really nice to fall asleep to. Man, honestly, like I said today, I feel like I want a movie set. This place just keeps turning it on for me. Alright, well, let's see how we go with this. <laughs> oh, this thing's a monster. Oh, that is so damn good. That palms and cheese crisp, my goodness. Oh, this is bloody delicious. This is so good. This is probably one of the best things I've cooked out here. Mmm. I'm gonna sleep like a baby tonight. All right, well, I feel like a bit of a slob for eating this. <laughs> Again, this absolutely everywhere. It's just dripping all over the place. So let me um, finish this and I'll get back to you guys after I'm done. Man, that thing was insane. Honestly, that was probably one of the best things I've made out of the bush. That was bloody delicious. What better to wash it down with than a, a gin and tonic as uh, the moon comes over the ridge. Well, I think on this note, let's wrap it up here. I was going to cook a really hectic um, uh, dessert. I made a, I don't know if you guys remember, I made a, um, like an apple crumble a couple of months back and it was so good. So I was going to do it again, like a pear and apple crumble, but after that burger, I'm so full. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to cook up a whole big dessert, so I might have to save that for the next trip. Um, so yeah, on that note, as uh, the full moon rises over the ridge, Oh, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> On that note, let's wrap it up here and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Actually, lastly, just before I wrap it up, quick little tip for you guys. I think I've shown you before, but if you've got a pretty messy pan, you want to clean it up rather than washing it out, just chuck it on the fire and um, yeah, that'll do the job for it. After a couple of minutes, it'll be clean as.
morning guys. What a beautiful morning to be out in the water. All these little swallow birds flying around me. The sun's just starting to light up the ridges behind me. And there is not a breath of wind either. So many birds around. Oh, it's such a beautiful morning. Alright, well, let's see if we can have any better luck with this fishing this morning. Damn it. Let's see if we can get him again. Oh, big strikes. Well, not really much luck with the fishing this morning. I've been changing up the lures and stuff, but nothing really seems to be working. I got one decent bite earlier on, but apart from that, that was about it. So, it's probably getting close to 9 o'clock, so I might make my way back to camp. Um, we'll get that packed down, we'll have some brekkie, and we'll um, jump back in the canoe and make our way back and maybe do a bit more fishing on the way back. Well, I was down in the water a little bit longer than I expected it to be. It's about quarter to 10, so it's starting to get a little bit late in the day. Um, so rather than uh, having my seal for break, I'm just going to have some fruit and then we'll get camp back down and then we'll jump back out in the canoe and start making our way back. Alright, well it's about 11 o'clock now. Uh, I've got a, probably about a three hour paddle. I think it's about yeah, nine or 10 k's, about a three hour paddle. So, better get a bit of a move on. Uh, we'll try to do a bit of fishing on the way back, but this wind started to pick up as well. So, I might make the um, yeah, fishing a little bit difficult in the canoe. So, we'll see how we go. But um, yeah, let's just uh, get on our way. Such gorgeous weather today. I think we've got about two days left of summer. So this is a really nice way to finish off summer. But looking forward to autumn, May. Eh? Autumn's my favorite time of year, so really keen for it. And I uh, got some really good trips coming up as well. The other day I sat down in the diary and sort of wrote out a list of where I wanted to go this year. I ended up with a list of about 15 to 20 places. So it's gonna be a pretty busy year, but man, some of the spots on that list look bloody epic, eh? Exploring some really gorgeous country and all over this state as well so i think it's gonna be a really good one and i'm pretty uh, keen to take you guys along with me so if you guys haven't subscribed yet and you sort of want to stay up to date with where i'm going then um yeah please do hit that subscribe button uh, so i think we'll yeah be in for a good one this year but anyway on that note i've got about a k to get back to my car so i think it's about time we wrap the video up just want to say a big thanks to all you guys watching hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you guys in the next one Hooray.